Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own center console. When I got my truck, it was missing a center console. I was looking online. The stock center consoles were way expensive. Junkyard center consoles were all messed up. So I did what I do best. I created my own center console, which not only looks good, but super comfortable. Since we already built the center console for the truck, we're going to go and build a center console for the Crown Vic. Now this car specifically is Project Police Interceptor. It's a decommissioned police car, Crown Victoria. And when they decommission them, when they're done using them in the police force, they remove all of the police lights, all of the center console, everything like that. So you just have this big gap here, which first of all, super uncomfortable because there's no armrests on the seats. So you have nowhere to really put your arms while you're driving. And also it's kind of just awkward having this huge gap here. So not only is the center console going to fill this gap and make it look a lot nicer, we're also going to make it really comfortable so that when you're driving, you could use it as an armrest and so that you could open up the top and have storage inside. Plus, in this center console, we're going to add switches. So I'm going to show you how to put switches into the center console. Maybe you have stuff that you need to wire in. And even better, I'm going to show you how to add these USB charging ports so you could charge your phone and electronics. And it also has this extra cigarette lighter, so you can use one of those cigarette lighter power adapters. So it's gonna be really neat to incorporate this into the center console. Now, building a center console is a lot easier than you think. And I'm gonna show you all the supplies you're gonna to need to use to build your own. Now to make it really simple for you, any products or tools that I'm using in this build, I'm gonna link in the description. That way you could easily find it, such as this foam. We also have this material. I actually picked this material up at Walmart, but you could go to your local craft store and they have it right there as well. Now I'm using a black canvas material, but you could use whatever color and whatever material you want. In this case, I chose this black canvas because, well, it matches the black on the seats here. Now, you don't have to use canvas. If we look at my truck, my seats are cloth, but I use this vinyl material, which matches really well. But for the Crown Vic, I really like this black canvas. So the foam and the material is what's going to cover the center console, but these items are what you're going to use to make the center console. The center console is going to be made out of wood. But before we make it out of wood, we're gonna be using cardboard to make a template that looks like this. Because cardboard is really easy to customize and adjust, and you can make whatever design you want. And then from there, we could create it out of wood. Now these are all the supplies you're gonna to need to build your very own custom center console. Now let me show you the four main steps of actually building the console, and then we'll get started. The first step is to figure out how you're gonna securely mount the center console. The second step, you're going to draw up your design and cut it out of cardboard. The third step is you're going to transfer your cardboard design to the wood and build the frame of the center console out of wood. And then the fourth and final step is to cover the wood with the foam and the material that you're using to give it a professional look and feel. So it's really that easy. And now let's begin this build. Step one is we need to find a way to mount the center console so that it's securely in place. Now you really need to make sure you securely mount this because if you're using this as an armrest and it's moving around, it's going to feel cheap and it's not going to feel solid. Plus, if you happen to get into an accident, you don't want this thing becoming a dangerous projectile. So make sure that you find a good way to mount it. Here in my truck, it was really easy to mount because the stock center console mounted right to these points right here. All I had to do was find a bolt that was long enough for each side and mount that bolt right through my custom center console. And designing it that way even allowed my center console to tilt backwards so I could fit a third person on the front bench seat. Now sometimes you have to get creative. On this Crown Vic it looks like there's no real mounting points besides the bolts that hold in the seats. But if you just cut away a little bit here, you can see right in this transmission tunnel there are two holes. So with these two holes what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the bolt that has threads that will tighten down into the hole. Just like so. And now that's in there nice and tight. So if we get one in the front and one in the rear, we have two good mounting points. Now that's everything you need to know about mounting your custom center console. So let's move on to step two. Now step two is my favorite step because you get to be creative and custom design what you want. And what we're gonna be doing for step two is we're gonna be creating a template of our center console using cardboard. So here's my drawing of what I want the center console to look like. You can see right here, there's a spot for the switches. Up here there's an armrest and it's a really simple design. So let's go take this design and draw it on our cardboard. This next part takes a lot of trial and error so just have fun with it. The first thing you want to do is put your arm up to where you think the top of the armrest should be and then mark it. So that right there will be the top but another thing you want to look at is how long you want your center console to be. The passenger seat is set up the way it should be. I have the driver's seat tilted back so I could fit this in here. So we're going to go off the passenger seat. 
and you just want to find the middle of the seat and mark it. Now that we have our center mark, another thing to remember is the front here. We have this tray that pulls out and we want to make sure there's some room in between the tray and our center console so we could still use this. So I'm just going to mark the bottom of our tray so we can make sure the tray won't hit our console. Now I'm going to darken the lines where we need to make the cuts in the rear, the top, and over by the tray. Good. Alright, let's see what we got here. Now we need to make our cuts. You can see I labeled it. That's the armrest height, that's the coin tray height, and there's the back. So right away the first thing we could do is we could cut the back off. So this is going to be our total length of our center console. And the maximum height is going to be the armrest height. So let's cut that as well. Since we're cutting a couple of switches, to make sure there's enough space, just mock it up real quick. This looks good and gives us plenty of room. And I drew these lines so I have an idea of where I want to cut. So now I'm going to make my cut. This is going to look great. Beautiful. So now let's go see how it fits. Now this looks good. The armrest feels real nice. And if we look at the coin tray, there's plenty of clearance here. So now we'll make our three-dimensional console box so we can see it mocked up and make sure everything is the way we want it. To make this three-dimensional, we need to know how wide we want our console to be. I have this piece of wood, which is actually the perfect width. So I'm going to be using this as the template for the width of the console. Now let's go cut our cardboard pieces out and make this three-dimensional. All right, let's make a copy of the side since both will be identical. And we could do that by tracing the side and then cutting it out. Next, we need the bottom piece, and that's the width of our piece of wood. So mark that width on a piece of cardboard and cut the piece for the bottom. Then we can tape the bottom to the sides and prop it up. Now let's cut the front, and then tape it up in place, and now we can work on the back and tape it in. And now we can put the lid on and tape one side so it works like an actual lid. And this is for the switch area. We're going to be using a black ABS plastic that'll go right here. I'll just need to cut this, but I'll do that later on. Now that we have our completed template, Let's go fit it in the car. And in the car, this feels perfect. My elbow could rest right on the edge while driving, there's plenty of room for switches, and our lid opens up for access to storage. Beautiful, now this is exciting. We're finished with step two and halfway done. Now we just need to disassemble our cardboard console into pieces so we know what to cut. Disassembly is simple, just cut the tape and remove each piece. Now I'm gonna to go to my local hardware store that sells wood and I'm bringing the cardboard template pieces. Sometimes they'll cut the wood there, especially since all our cuts are straight with no curves. So I just got my piece of wood which is 12 feet long, 12 inches wide, and three quarters of an inch thick. The guy helping me out at the home improvement store said he could cut the pieces for me for free. So I had the templates laid out on the wood for him to cut. And for each piece he'll simply mark it and cut it. Just like that. The template makes it really simple. Just line up the template, mark it where it needs to be cut, and cut it. And just repeat the process for all of the sides. It's that easy. This is gonna save me a ton of time rather than cutting this with a handsaw at home. And that's all there is to it. Go from cut cardboard to cut wood. Now let me pay for the wood and let's finish up our console. All right, we're back from the home improvement store and I have everything laid out next to their cardboard templates. As you saw, many home improvement stores will actually cut the wood for you for free. But just in case if yours doesn't, it's really easy. You just use a basic handsaw, you trace the lines out, and you cut it. It takes a little bit more time, but it's really not that big of a deal. Now with everything laid out, let's finish step three and assemble our center console out of wood. One thing I want to mention is take into account the thickness of the wood. The cardboard is thinner than the wood, so make sure you remember that when you go to cut the wood and adjust your measurements accordingly so everything fits together. Now you want to make sure all the parts fit together nicely before we screw this together. And this is fitting like a glove. There you go. Now we know everything fits, so let's start screwing this together. Now we're going to assemble the console using wood screws. I'm going to use a drill bit that's smaller than the screw to drill pilot holes, which will prevent the wood from splitting. So let's begin. The first piece we're going to do is the back. Drill the pilot hole, and then screw the screw in. I'll do the same thing for the other side as well. Now let's put up the sides, drill pilot holes, then screw the screws. With the back and sides done, let's screw the front in. And you do the same exact thing, pilot hole, then screw the screws in. Now, let's screw the bottom in. All 
All right, we fully assembled our wooden console. We screwed everything in, and this thing is solid, which is what we want. One thing I want to point out is your woodworking doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cover this with foam and material, so gaps like this you won't even see. Now, using a cardboard template, I'm going to quickly drill three holes in the base of our console. First, I'm going to drill two holes in the rear for mounting the console to the car. And now, one in the front so we can run wires through it for our switches. With the holes drilled, we have one more thing left to do in step three. And that's to cut our black plastic out for the switches. Since we need to cut the plastic to the width of the box, I'm going to use the console lid and mark where we need to cut with a box cutter. Might as well mark both of them while we're at it. And now let's cut the plastic. When cutting the plastic, you want to use a blade that has at least 80 teeth so it makes a clean cut and doesn't create chips. And that looks beautiful. Look at that. Now to finish up step three, let's install all the switches right into our ABS plastic. So if we're looking from the driver's side, this is what it's gonna look like. Main switches up here, the two smaller switches here, and then our three pods right there. We also have our siren, which is gonna go right against there, just like that. So let's cut out holes for the switches. I'm gonna teach you a trick that I use to get the cutout straight without having to measure. And this trick is using tape. Get your first layer on there, and for the second layer, use the straight lines of the tape and place one right next to each other. This will create straight lines for you to go off of, which will make your life so much easier. Now you can get your switch and trace the outline so you know where to cut. Use your tape lines to line up the switch box so you know it's straight. And then do the same thing for the round gauges and trace each hole. Now trace the small square switch and we need a small hole to push the wire through for our light bar switch. Now I'm gonna use this oscillating tool which vibrates real quickly to cut the large square out. If you don't have this tool, you could use a drill and make a bunch of holes with a drill bit right along the line. You could also use a rotary tool like a Dremel or you could even use a soldering iron and melt the plastic. When cutting these holes, just take your time and boom, the first hole is cut out. Always test fit your switches and this fits nice and snug. Now with the round holes, we're mounting these in there, and to cut that out, I'm gonna use a hole saw. So grab your correct size bit, and we'll drill out our three holes. And again, test each hole to make sure it fits. And we are good. Now we have this square switch, and I'm using a drill bit to start the hole, but we need to make a square, so now I'm using a soldering iron to melt the plastic into a square hole. And that fits nice and snug. This switch just needs a hole for a wire. And I'm using a caliper to measure the diameter of the wire end of this bit, and this bit will give us the perfect size hole. Look at that, perfect. Now we have one last thing to mount, and that is the siren control box. So first let's mark the hole that the wires are gonna go through. Drill a pilot hole, and then drill a large hole. Good. Now let's mark the bracket for the siren box which looks good right about here. So we'll mark each hole and drill each one out. Beautiful. And that's all the holes we need. The front for the switches, we got the two switches here, three holes here, got the bracket here and the hole there. We are done drilling. Step three of building the box out of wood and then cutting our plastic out is done. Let's move on to step four and cover this up with the foam and the material. This is going to be the end of part one of how to build your own custom center console. Part two will cover the final step where we wrap the center console in foam and material, install the switches, and mount the center console into the car. If you want to see that, you could click on the screen or click the link in the description, which will take you to part two. This console is coming out amazing, and I can't wait to show you step four and how good it looks when it's finally done. So stay tuned.